Hello and welcome to another Lombardi Live. We're catching up today with a very dear friend and great drummer, Angelo Pinteras, who is in Greece and he's here live with us today. We're going to find out what's been happening to him ever since he got out of school as we follow his incredible story as a person and as a drummer. But first, let's take a look at part one of one of the most inspirational interviews I've ever done. Then we'll be back and talk with Angelo. See you in a minute. Hello, I'm Don Lombardi, and we're here today with Angelo Penteras. Angelo, thank you for joining us today. Hi, Don. Thank you for having me. Yes. A name you might not be familiar with, but a story that you're going to never forget, I'll guarantee you. Uh, not only his professional drumming story, but his life story also. And we're going to be joined a little bit later by your teacher, right? Uh, and how long have you been at the Lockham? Uh, I've been at Los Angeles College of Music since 2014. So I guess that makes it four years now. Let's go back to your, your early, early years and explain to everybody your life situation. So I was born with a disability called cerebral palsy. And uh, my parents were told by several doctors that I was never going to um, move or move or use my arms or legs at all. Um, so my journey with being really dedicated, I think, started with physical therapy. And I started that um, when I was nine months old. And I've been doing it every day since. Did you see a drummer? Did something inspire you to do that? Yeah, I saw someone play drums at my school. And um, I, I just, it just stuck with me the whole day. And I was clicking and banging on anything that I could find. Um, so I got a drum kit when I was 12. And um, for a year, I, I, I was practicing and sort of just getting used to the movements that it requires and it took me about a, a year to learn the you know the basic rock beat that most people can learn in one lesson that's amazing i mean talk about dedication because that's what it takes and repetitive practice absolutely uh, and you have an inspiring story about your practice routine in general for every drummer out there to listen to how did you approach getting through college a challenge unto itself um, what was your attitude towards practicing and being able to do the challenge of being able to do what you had to do in order to take it to the next level? Well, I think that probably the most valuable lesson that I've learned at LA College of Music is how to be a good practicer and um, sort of tackle my issues very methodically. Um, in going to college, I realized that uh, learning a musical instrument and physical therapy are very, very similar because essentially what you're doing in both is trying to create new and better habits and a more efficient body motions. Um, so a lot of practicing uh, technique and new beats is the same as someone would do in, in physical therapy. So, um, you know, I, I, I used all the knowledge that I have of breaking things up, you know, doing it slowly over and over again correctly, not just doing it over and over, but repeating something correctly so my brain can make that connection with my body and I can absorb the, the information. How much physical therapy did you get do from a very early age on? What was your normal day like? Early on, I would say until about 16 years old, it was uh, very, very heavy. Um, so it was every day, sometimes even twice a day, you know, I would get up er earlier, uh, sometimes even before school. And then after school, um, it was my number one priority, uh, even more important than homework and all of that. I would um, come back home and uh, or go straight to physical therapy, but I, I would do maybe three to four hours uh, for the first 16 years and um, after that I improved and I got to the point where um, I didn't need it as much so I would say right now at this moment it takes me about an hour and a half to two hours every day. Not talking about practicing drums which is probably a form of physical therapy too right? Yeah for sure. Uh, for sure uh, but you're just talking about other types of physical therapy before you would sit down and actually get into your practice routine. Yeah. And what is your practice routine in terms of time? 
you're in college. It's really hard. You've got a full schedule. Um, um, what, can you, what, what, do you, what do you force yourself to do, and how do you organize that? I think being in college is the ideal time to practice a lot. Like, now is the time to do this. And um, it's funny that Mike is actually here because the first day of orientation, um, he said something um, that really stuck with me. And he sort of told us a story about that he was on a cruise ship gig and every night after the gig was over, he would practice for uh, five or six hours every day. And that's when he really improved. And he basically explained that if you're going to practice a lot, now is the time to do it. So it really stuck with me. Um, I went through many many phases of practicing of like maybe overdoing it a little bit and not being so efficient but now my practice routine today um is about four to five hours uh, a day um so you, you say that and it sounds like oh hey i practice four to five hours a day. let's make a big point of that i mean that's dedication that it takes if you really want to be a pro you're, pract you're doing your physical therapy a couple hours a day and you're practicing four to five hours a day. Yeah. Within those four or five hours, uh, what do you look at accomplishing? How do you organize that? First, I think it's very important to have very clear vision of what you want to improve so then you know what to work on because if you don't know that, then it, it's just sort of messy. For me, um, you may not know this, but uh, my disability contains something called spasticity, which means that naturally, in my sort of default way of being, my brain is constantly telling my muscles that they should tense up. So uh, my, my default to everything is, to, is to, for my muscles to tighten. Um, so I realized that that's getting in the way of my drumming. And I, I, I'm working currently on a pad routine that has specific exercises to help me relax. And um, that takes two hours of my practice routine every day. Uh, and it's always the same. So once I do that, uh, I would take a break, maybe go get some food or something like that. And um, then the three hours remaining, I would probably break them into one and a half and then a break and one and a half. But a lot of the time, when I get tired, I'm just going to practice something different. So, for example, I'm going to go from technique or coordination, which is sort of a very dense thing, to maybe playing along to a track or something like that, just to keep it fresh and enjoyable because we're meant to enjoy practice, you know. In order to get your muscles relaxed, what is a tip that you could give all drummers out there? What, what is the practice routine like in order to do that? I do a lot of exercises out of the Joe Morello book. Okay. But I think just just the like if I could summarize it in a nutshell is practicing your fundamentals like an exercise like the stone killer or something really slow in front of a mirror and I think it's not only doing it but doing it consistently. So doing it every day instead of doing it one day and then skipping it for 3 days it's just little baby steps that eventually turn out to be a huge amount of progress. You know, you would be a great teacher. I sure hope as your career path goes down the road that you, that you teach because uh, not only have you gained the knowledge of what you're doing and how to play the drums, but you also have the whole background of having to not just do it, teach your body how it has to do what it needs to do in order so you can do it. Uh, and that gives you a, a whole bunch of background that most people would never have. So. Thank you. That's a great compliment. So. That's part of the amazing video that we have on drumchannel.com. Go over to drumchannel.com, check the whole thing out. And right now, let's welcome in Greece, Angelo Panteras. Thank you for joining me today. Hi, everyone. It's great to be here. When we did that interview, you were just about out of college, right? Yes. And, and what was your life like going through high school, getting ready to prepare for getting into college and being a music major? Well, before going to college, I was really trying to balance, you know, doing many hours of physical therapy, school, and practicing as much as I can. Uh, so 
you know, I was trying to improve my body for drumming, even through physical therapy, if that makes sense. Sure, so, as we discussed. Yeah, everything that was going through my mind is what can I do to help my body play drums better? And you spend a lot of time every day, I know we talked about uh, just preparing. I mean, we think about somebody who starts out by practicing three or four hours a day. You had to do a lot of physical therapy to get to the point to where you could even start practicing every single day. Yes, I, you know, part of the issue was not having enough time, which of course all changed, thankfully, when I went uh, to college. And actually, interestingly enough, it wasn't that physical therapy was just helping my drumming, but drumming was also helping physical therapy. It was interesting to see it work both ways. Because um, drumming, you know, w with drums, you have to be in the moment when you're practicing or playing music with others. You can't be thinking about other things. You have to be present. And to me, that's a form of meditation. Exactly. Uh, so what's been happening now since we did that interview and since you've graduated from college? So when I graduated college, I came back. Uh, so I was in college, in Los Angeles College of Music, for those of you who don't know. And then after I graduated, I came back to Greece for a while. And I had time to finally do my own project. And I started thinking, what what's my creative voice you know this was the first time that i wasn't playing for a singer or preparing for something specific for school and actually right before i left i had a very inspiring conversation with ross miller that changed my life and he said you have to find your voice what are you trying to do and what are you trying to achieve through this instrument. So that got me thinking. And uh, I realized that, you know, drums is one of my biggest passions, but also I really care about inspiring and empowering and uplifting others. So I thought to myself, how could I, co I combine those two things? Because I was playing drums and speaking as a speaker separately but I wanted to bring these two things together. And that is when I came up with the idea of empowerment through music. And empowerment through music, explain a little bit more exactly what that is. So empowerment through music is a series of songs which I perform live and you get to see me play. But before performing the song, I speak about what it means to me uh, and share some of my personal stories or life lessons, uh, you know, difficulties that I've had to overcome. And uh, with the hopes of other people hearing it and being inspired to better their own lives. And you do motivational speaking also, correct? Yes, correct. Um, I've actually done a version of empowerment through music live as well. I did it for the first time in January of um, 2020, where I had basically a series of events where I would um, speak and share my story from the beginning, you know, from getting the diagnosis of cerebral palsy tetraplegia and explain what my parents went through when understanding that I wasn't supposed to move my arms or legs at all. and. I take the audience with me on a journey of my whole story and the speech ends with me going to college and pursuing my dream of becoming a drummer. So I close the speech by encouraging people to follow their dreams. And after that, I also perform live. Um, since this happened in Poland, I was performing live with a Polish duo called Shandy and Eva. So after the speech, there was a 45 minute um, set of music and I combined both. That's amazing. That's something you've got to take on the road around the world when you can. I hope to do that someday. So empowerment through music, the inspirational songs 
with your inspirational messages. Where can we find those? On YouTube and on Drum Channel? So, Empowerment Through Music Season 1 is already out on YouTube and the Drum Channel website. However, um, on the Drum Channel website, you can actually find exclusive play-along tracks. Um, and if you actually play along to them, please tag me on social media. I'd love to see what you did with it. Um, and Empowerment Through Music Season 2 is actually coming out very soon again on YouTube. Uh, but make sure to check out the Drum Channel website because there's going to be more exclusive content there. And like Season 1, on Season 2 you also give uh, inspirational conversation uh, about each one of the songs and what they mean to you uh, and what you would hope to impart upon the listener. And in Season 2, the last song, uh, Momentum, you left that a little bit open uh, and you kind of surprised me because you invited me to make some comments with you about that song. Yes, so basically when I was thinking about empowerment through music season two, I was thinking about how can I make every aspect of this uh, second season better. So I did a few things to elevate it, uh, which are um, one, I added different kinds of percussion to my setup, which I think made for some interesting grooves and ideas. Um, two, I had the fortune of having um, Philip Bino. He's a fantastic bass player and he actually plays with Steve Vai. He played on a few of the tracks. And last but definitely not least, I had the pleasure of having you uh, as a guest for the last song of the track uh, of the season, uh, which is called Momentum. And that was quite an honor for me. And uh, something that you're going to learn about is uh, the three P's, which uh, tell us really quickly what those are. And then when they see that last track of series two, they'll know more about it. All right, really quickly. These are purpose, perspective, and perseverance. Yes. And boy, there's a lesson right there for you, for sure. It was an honor for me to be able to catch up with you in Greece. And thank you for joining us. Um, thank you so much, Don. It's always a pleasure. Uh, and I know there's going to be many more things coming up. And as soon as you get a tour booked here, especially in the U.S., let me know. Because that's going to be something that I think everybody, whether you're a drummer or not, should watch. Uh, a great story about life and perseverance. and. You get to see a great drummer play at the same time. Angelo Penteras, thank you so much. Thank you, Don. Thank you. We'll see you next time on Lombardi Live. Inner Strength is the first song of the EP, and I chose it to be the first song because I think that everything in a person actually starts from within, starts from a healthy mindset, a spirit, and a drive. I think a lot of the time people make the mistake to judge others based on what they see on the outside, but the reality is that only you know what your true abilities are and you shouldn't let other people judge you and put limitations based on what they see because only you know your true inner potential.